solving exponential and logarithmic equations. So at this time, we've learned all the basics that we need to know about exponential functions. We know all the basics that we need to know about logarithmic functions. And so now we're going to change them from function form into equation form, and we are going to solve those equations. So first we're going to focus on the exponential equations. And so before I actually get into any examples, I'm going to give you an application. And so hopefully you realize why such things are important. So my application here is a couple invest $8,000 in a CD account. So they invest it in a bank account. The expected yield is 4.5% and the earnings are compounded monthly. And so we want to find the investment function as a function of time. Well, this goes back to compound interest and basically it's asking you, can you recite the compound interest formula and can you put all of the numbers that are given here in those places? So let's go ahead and do that. We know our investment function is an A function for the amount and it said this is going to be a function of time. In general, our function is the principal times one plus the rate over the number of times it's compounded to the number of times it's compounded times the amount of time that it is invested. So in this specific example, our principal is $8,000. One plus our rate is 0.045. The number of times it's compounded is 12 because it said it's compounded monthly, and then that is to the 12t power. And so that is just a review of something that we learned back in the exponential function section. Now, the second part of this is asking how much time will it take for their investment to double? So this is saying if they're starting out with $8,000 and their goal is for it to double, meaning we're going to end up with $16,000, how much time is it going to take? So instead of our amount here, we're just going to replace that with our $16,000. So we have $16,000 is equivalent to 8,000 times 1 plus 0 0.45 divided by 12 to the 12th. And so we want to solve this equation. Well, first and foremost, we know that we can just divide by 8,000 on both sides. Or we could have just set it equal to 2 in the first place because that's the amount of time it's going to take to double, 2 or double. And so then let me simplify the inside of this here. So 0 0.045 divided by 12 gives me 0 0.00375. And so then if I add that to 1, I have 1.00375 to the 12t. And so now the question is, is, well, where do I go from here? We haven't learned any techniques to get rid of t out of the exponent. And so that's why we need to have this section over solving exponential and solving logarithmic equations. I'm going to start by I'm going to start by focusing on the solving the exponential equations. And so let's learn. That's going to help us solve some of those equations. And so this is the equivalence property. And basically it's saying if I have all of my stipulations met with exponential functions, my b, my x, my y are real numbers, b is greater than 0 such that it's not equal to 1, then if I can put the equation in the format where my bases are identical, then that means I can basically get rid of the bases and just solve the equation where my exponents are equal to each other. And so let's utilize this property to solve some simple exponential examples. So I have two of them here. The first one, 4 to the 2x minus 3 is equal to 64. Well, I want to solve this by using my equivalence property which means I want to convert this where I have my bases to be the exact same thing. So here I have the base of 4. Can I rewrite 64 to have the exact same base? Or if I can't, then could I manipulate both of them to have the exact same base? And this one is going to be easy because I know 64 is a power of 4. It is equal to 4 to the third power. And so if I just rewrite 64 as 4 to the third power, then that matches the same base on the left-hand side of my equation. 
So my base is match, which means I have now the equivalence property, which means I just need to solve the equation where I have my exponents equal to each other. In this example, 2x minus 3 is equal to 3. This is just a linear equation, so I can solve it just by isolating x. I'm going to do that by adding 3 to both sides, give me 2x is equal to 6, and then by dividing 2 on both sides, and so I get x is equal to 3. If you don't trust your math, you can always check yourself. Check it by plugging 3 back into my x variable. And so if I check this here, this gives me 4 to the 2 times 3 minus 3, or 4 to the 6 minus 3, or 4 to the 3rd, and of course that is equal to 64. So I did get the right solution for this example. So let's move over to example 2. 25 to the 4 minus t is equal to 1 fifth to the 3t plus 1. So we want to solve that one by, again, using the equivalence property. So what we want to do is we want to get the bases to match. I'm going to let you pause the video to see if you can do this example on your own. So in this one, I'm going to have to manipulate both bases. I'm going to manipulate this base, and I'm going to manipulate this base. And I'm going to manipulate them so they are both a power of 5. So if I were to take 25 and write it as a power of 5, that would be 5 squared. Well, if I have 25 to the power of 4 minus t, that means I have 5 squared to the power of 4 minus t. So if I wanted to simplify what I have in my exponent, then I would need to multiply these powers, which means I would need to distribute my 2 through that. So that is the same thing as 5 to the 8 minus 2t power. And so that's what I'm going to put over here. Now the other side, I have 1 fifth. I want to rewrite it as a base of 5. Well, if I rewrite it as a base of 5, I know I just need to invert my fraction, and I can do that by having a negative exponent. Again, now, if I put that to the power of 3t plus 1, I know that I need to simplify everything in that power by distributing that negative 1. So that's the same thing as 5 to the negative 3t minus 1. And so now I have my equivalence property set up. I have my bases, so they match. So I might need to do a little bit of manipulation in the exponents, and that might mean, specifically in this example, I had to distribute something through so they matched out correctly. Okay, and so now I can drop my bases, and I can just set my exponents equal to each other. So that gives me 8 minus 2t is equal to negative 3t minus 1. Again, it's a linear equation, so let me just solve this by isolating my variable. First, I'm going to move my t's to the left and then my constants to the right. So that gives me a t is equal to negative 9. And so I have it completely isolated, and I believe that's what my answer is. So if you don't trust yourself, you don't trust your solution, you are always more than welcome to check it. And so I'm going to substitute negative 9 back into all of the t's in my original equation and make sure that the left-hand side matches the right-hand side. So this gives me 25 to the 4 minus a negative 9 or 25 to the 4 plus 9, which gives me 13. Now that's going to be an extreme number, so let me stop there and let me move to the other side and let's see what happens. If I take 1 fifth, to the 3 times negative 9 plus 1. That's 1 fifth to the negative 27 plus 1, or 1 fifth to the negative 26. And so at this point, you could either type both of these in your calculator to see that they match, or if you're comfortable, we're basically doing the same manipulation as before. I could write 25 as 5 squared to the 13. And I could write 1 over 5 as 5 to the negative 1 to the negative 26. And then in the second part here, my negatives would cancel out. And so that would give me 5 to the 26. And if I multiply these here, that would also give me 5 to the 26. 
And so I have just confirmed that my equation does match. So we can see that we definitely need to know our exponent rules to check these, or in a later video, I'm going to show you how to check these by using a graphing utility.